This is the Magic Word Podcast.com. Hello, this is Scott Wells for the Magic Word Podcast.com. This week, we are brought to you again by the Friends of the Magic Word. Those are the ones who provide their financial support with their donations and ongoing pledges, which help us to defray our various costs we have with producing this podcast week after week and giving you the kind of content that we think you enjoy hearing. And when I say we, I'm talking about the royal we. (laughs) I'm sorry. I certainly do appreciate that. Thank you very much. And you can find out more information when you go to themagicwordpodcast.com and you can click on a link there that would say, become a friend of the Magic Word. There you can find out some information, you can watch a video, and decide if it's worth at least a cup of coffee a month for you to get all of this great content week after week. Well, this week we are traveling with the microphone to the Magi Fest in Columbus, Ohio, where we visited with Jania Taylor. Jania and I have been friends for a long time, and she is uh, friends of many magicians. She lives in the Michigan area and has a, a wide variety of experience where performing on stage. She had studied under Neil Foster in the, with the Chavez School. I believe she said she's the second or third female student of, uh, of, of Neil's. And along that line, by the way, she does talk in this episode a lot about the presentation that she gives on women and magic from Adelaide Herman to Susie Wanda's and June Horowitz and so many others. It's a wonderful project and presentation that she has and worthy of some magic convention actually snapping her up and using that as a presentation perhaps for one of their events on the schedule. So this week, please welcome my guest from Michigan, Ms. Jania Taylor here on The Magic Word. someone with me today I've been wanting to talk with for quite some time and we have been at uh, conventions together someone who has also provided some content uh, for convention updates whenever I do attend particularly at Colon Magic uh, uh, Magi Fest uh, in, in, in Columbus uh, but then yeah at Abbott's uh, get together uh, she is a staple there and has uh, performed doing a lot of street magic there as well as doing a uh, lot of like Renaissance festival types of things, or no, not Renaissance. What would I say? It's, Which it, it's more um, festivals? Yeah, I do a lot of festivals. The festivals, and the one, but the one you're thinking of is like a Renaissance festival, but it's a, uh, an early American festival. It's set in okay. seven, the time period is 1776 to like okay. 18 something. Well, we're we're jumping ahead, or okay. should I say we're <laughs> jumping behind? You know, for for an older festival and someone who I think was kind of interesting uh, in the winter time. When you're not doing as much magic, you are on the streets or anything. You are actually a ski patrol. Uh, I'm an instructor. Teacher, I'm instructor. an instructor. Okay, which not is patrol. different than the patrol. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, please welcome Jania Taylor. Hey there, Jania. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> nice to be welcomed. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. And uh, one of my favorite uh, ladies, uh, people in the world, really to drink martinis with. And we don't have one with us right now. I kind of, which is kind of a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a good thing. <laughs> we, we tried that make, once. That's right. That's and you're not going to hear that one. Uh, we had recorded a conversation uh, some time ago. And yeah, that we could understand each other, but you wouldn't have understood us uh, at the end of that. So I was going to ask you also, prior to uh, doing ski instructing and everything for a long time, you were actually lecturing as well. And you had, it was mainly about, um, as I recall, how to promote yourself. It wasn't a, a it's not basically it. It wasn't like right. how to do a show, but it was really materials that you would use. Right, how to mark yourself. It was called getting a gig as a full-time job. That was it, yes. Talk a little bit about what that lecture was about, what you did in that. Okay, well, I, it was, there was no magic, but I, I, I talked about how to get more magic shows because you have now bought all this stuff and you want to make a little bit of money with it. Mm-hmm. So it was all about, I used to do a lot of direct mail. So it was about um, how I put my mailing pieces together, how I got my lists I got all my lists for free. I didn't buy any lists because they're expensive. Um, And I I had like this this three-step system where I would send out maybe a flyer first, then a letter, then a postcard or something something like that. So it was all direct mail. And it's all changed now because the lecture is pretty obsolete because so much stuff can be done online with emails and MailChimp and contact, constant contact. That's and right. That was back when it was still 
paper. Right, anyway. it was paper, and I, mm-hmm. so I I was a big tried fold flyer person. Then I didn't have to buy pay for an envelope. The flyer was mm-hmm. the sure just fold it open, put right. a stamp on the on that. Right. You have the envelope on that. I, I understand how that worked. And there was uh, another lecture that Bob Brown had put out some time ago, and I've got a. a I'll see if I can remember to put a link to that video uh, in the in the blog for this week's episode. But when he was in Hawaii at the IBM convention, I had it allowed me to tape his lecture. And Bob has since passed. And also, the stuff he talked about is completely irrelevant to today. Mm-hmm. But the one thing I did get out of that was that you can still apply today is th- to go first class, it only costs about 10% more, but you get like 30 to 50% more exposure to that. In other words, he would say, instead of just having a regular business card, have gold leaf business mm-hmm, card or right. better quality paper. It doesn't cost that much more for all that. Well, nowadays, you really don't even use business cards. Do you have? Do you use business uh, cards? I still, I still use business cards, and people still ask me a lot for a card. Yeah. When I'm street performing, they'll ask for a card. Mm-hmm. So I still, I still have cards. But you have a website, obviously. Yes, you know. and it... This which is on my card as well, so they sure. can get more information. But You're, you put up like a QR code or something, or that people can scan that is out. I mean, that'd be one way. Right, that would be a good way. I've never done that, but I had a friend make me a QR card, and I've never ever used it. But I should when I'm out street performing. It would take people right to my website. Right, if you just right. had like a sign. I mean, mm-hmm. where are you going to be putting Magical Jane? Yet? What do you go by? Magic Lady. Magic Lady. Magic yeah. Lady. Because yeah. yeah. the the. You know, the the little kids were the one that that gave me that nickname, so I ran with it. You know, they'd be like, "Oh, they magic lady, magic lady's here." <laughs> they'd see me, you know, in the store, magic ladies. I'm like, "Why? I'm going to use that." <laughs> yes, right, right. When you do, well, I was going to talk about the kids show in just a second, but when you're outside and street performing, uh, and you would have magic lady sign, if you could have like a QR code or something that's right. there, people can scan that. Because instead of asking for a card, or if you're busy or talking or whatever, you can also say, I guess during your spiel, of just uh, you can scan that. It'll take you to the website, give you all the information that right. you need to See, know. Right. See, I should anyhow. just because I use <laughs> I dream big. I use a five gallon bucket for my tip jar for my hat good girl <laughs> <laughs> i'm dreaming big <laughs> that's right that's right i could just put it on my bucket <laughs> that's right as you're walking around with this bucket mm-hmm. yeah, i can have a, just a big qr code mm-hmm. that's going to be on there then too how do you go about asking for tips at the end what is your tip line oh man um this is a combination of jeff warzak who's a Mich- michigan magician and hank morehouse mm-hmm. and i think hank's the one that gave jeff warzak the idea and then gave him permission to write it up in like one of the MUM or something. So the very last thing that I do, I say to the audience, you want to learn a magic trick, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I want to learn a magic trick. Okay. So everybody needs to take out a dollar. You know, you have your magic prop right in your pocket, take out a dollar. It works better, of course, with a five or a 10 or a 20. Yeah. And then I teach them the, uh, how to, Turn it upside it up, so, turn upside down, yeah. so I really don't humbug them. Mm-hmm. And then I say, now you make a paper tube around your thumb. Of course, I have a thumb tip on. And if you can't pull out a blue handkerchief, it means you have a fake dollar bill, and I'm collecting fake dollar bills for today's performance. <laughs> and my 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 buckets out yeah. there, and okay. they have their money in their hand, and they drop it right in my. So they've already bucket. got the money out right. to begin with. Right. I like that idea of uh, of trying to get that out. Do you work restaurants? Ever do uh, much walk around and. Uh, in a restaurant, yeah, I, table I ha- hopping? in northern Michigan where I'm from, I had a standing gig for 14 years. It was called the Bob Inn. Mm-hmm. It was like a 50s diner, hmm. and I worked there for every Wednesday night for 14 years in the summertime because it's a resort area where I, where I work. So they're going to hire me in the summer and not when it's. Mm-hmm. And I just took a call on the way here to the Magi Fest for a restaurant that's trying to start like a kids night where they have a special kids menu yeah. in the winter time. They don't want to do it in the summer because they have enough business in the summer, but they want to try to create some more business in the winter. So okay. hopefully that'll come through. Yeah. Uh, well, when, uh, the reason I was asking about restaurants, if you had a, a tip line you use, which would be different, obviously you're not carrying a bucket around right. the table, <laughs> table you know, I would imagine. Oh, no, I've never, so. I've never really kind of tried to turn a tip at restaurants. But the great thing, what happens... I noticed at the bottom is one, all you need, you almost need a shield to do it. We need one person to tip you Mm -hmm. and all the other tables see you. Yes. And then they think, oh, we're supposed to tip her. Mm -hmm. And that when, if, if one person at the beginning of the night tipped me, it was going to be a good night because all the other tables saw it. 
Well, if you talk about a shill, you know, one good idea, of course, the, the best way to make sure that you the table you're working for knows that the other tables have tipped you, and they probably should also, it's if you get somebody to bring a tip over to you. Right. Or perhaps if you have the waiter saying, hey, this is from that other table over there. Right. And you could talk with the waiter, mm-hmm. and so every time you're there, they're going to realize, oh, you know. Uh, one thing that I had used for a long time, and I think is pretty subtle, and it's not begging for money, it's just... Uh, because you're not saying anything about the money, but as you're getting close to the end, you're saying, you guys have been really great. I want to show you one more thing. I don't know if I'm going to have time to show this to other tables, but you guys have been so wonderful. I'm going to do one more one more trick for you. You got time for one more thing? By that time, obviously, they like you and you've engaged with them. And so uh, that is a signal that, number one, it is your last trick. Number two, if they're going to pull out some money to give you, that's the time then they should start doing that. Because if you don't signal that and you say, uh, that's my last trick, thanks a lot, I'm going mm-hmm. to the table, and you walk away, people are starting, oh, he's, uh, oh, I, I need to give him some money. They reach in their pocket, oh, he's already gone, never mind. Right. So this way is just kind of a little subliminal tip, if you will, of, of saying, I'm, 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 this is going to be my last one, I'm going to leave. And so you don't say anything if you want to give me money, You're just saying, you know, this, and, and also telling them that they're special and, and whatnot. Right. So That's a good idea, too. Just a little mm-hmm. way that you kind of uh, end up over there. So going back then to marketing about how that has evolved, and you don't obviously give that lecture anymore because it's it's, it's obsolete, right? <laughs> have you kept up with, and do you advertise much, or do you have tips for uh, social media and wh- how you would use that to promote yourself? Right. Well, I still um, take I st- I still keep mailing lists. Okay. Of sc- sure. Schools. Email lists. Yeah, email lists. Schools, libraries, festivals, mm-hmm. local events. Um, mm-hmm. So I still do that, and then. Um, I used to use, which is like a dinosaur's FileMaker Pro, but it's a great way to keep things organized. Mm -hmm. And now I think I'm going to start using MailChimp because you can really send send out some really nice. Yes. You know, it looks like it's 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 like an an online flyer. Mm -hmm. And also people and companies have already accepted and understand what MailChimp is so they don't consider that to be spam it's kind of like constant comment Mm -hmm. constant contact contact. Mm -hmm. i've used constant contact for a long time with my corporate clients because it could get past the spam filters of some companies right mailchimp has since gotten to have that same cachet i think you know and that acceptance if you will so i'm able to get that through also right and i think i I kind of thinking about maybe going back to some direct marketing with a postcard and the combination send the postcard and then follow up with an email do you always send thank you notes? Yep. Do you? Okay. And that and I and that's when I ask for a letter of recommendation. Do you still get those? I still do. Huh. Because that was one of the hardest things I think to get is for people to give you a, uh, a written recommendation. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, so I have heard before, and I've used this also, is when you finish a show and you have your camera, your e- your, right. your phone, and someone comes back behind the curtain or whatever. So, hey, it was a great show. I really enjoyed it. So, well, wait, can you say that, uh, you know, again? I've found probably nine times out of ten, it's kind of like, this guy was great. I would love this show. <laughs> sound like it was like, that's not the same enthusiasm you just gave me when you saw me a moment ago. It's like when the when the lights are on, all of a sudden it changes. You know? Microphone shy or yeah, camera yeah. shy. Yeah. Exactly. Or they can't state... You know, with such spontaneity, they just had shown you. Um, but have you ever used anything like that or any kind of as uh, far as? I, you know, I'm not good about it. I'm, I kind of like to leave my phone in the car hmm. when I'm performing because my dad's known to call me like three times in a day, you <laughs> <Okay>. know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> being a typical dad. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, he'll call me in the middle of my show. So I, and then I forget. So I don't, then it's in my car and then I forget mm-hmm. to do it. And so I'm not good at collecting those, but it's a great thing to do. I know a lot of the guys do do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and, but I still like writing a note because so many, who gets nice real mail anymore? I think it's, a little bit different. Everybody sends an email now. and That's true. Yeah. But when people do send emails, I think they get to the point. In other words, whenever we are talking, they tend to be more flowery. Or they will be talking about, hey, what's going on or whatever. Right. But if you're texting someone, you get to the meat of it. And same way with email, mm-hmm. I've got something to say. They might say, hey, how are you doing? Or it was a good show last night. But they kind of, I think, will be more succinct with that email where you can have a pull quote from the right. email. Right. Right. That's true, too. But, but you solicit those. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And, but I always I solicit I still send him a a, a, a handwritten thank you not or? a handwritten it's a, it's a it's a it's a typed letter 
And then that, and then I send a self-addressed stamp envelope because I ask for a letter of recommendations for your yeah. comments and criticisms. You all, it's like, all can't be nice. Yeah. And I get a lot of those back still so you, on, on people's letterheads. So you do send them mm-hmm. some, uh, a form to complete, basically. Right. Okay. Well, it's not even a form, but I, I, I send them a self-addressed stamp envelope because... That's already done for them. All they have to do is write the oh, letter. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, they have to do is write a letter mm-hmm. and put it in the mailbox. Right. I have uh, also found a couple things. If if you want someone to respond a certain way, you can tell them how to respond. So let's say, like, again, I'm about to perform at a cocktail party or a strolling or a restaurant or whatever it is. You'll say... Uh, you're going to say, as soon as you, I'm going to show you something, and you're going to think this is the most amazing thing you've ever seen. Or you're just going to say, how did I do that? You know, in other words, and, and, and a lot of times people don't know what to say except the response you'd already clued them to say. I don't, I don't know what to say. I've never seen anything like that. Mm-hmm. So after you're finished with that. Uh, likewise, whenever I used to send out emails and uh, with a thank you saying, hey, I could use a testimonial, uh, I hope you enjoyed the show and it met your expectations. Mm-hmm. These kind of subtle kinds of words behind the scenes, basically, of to, to of how you want them to say you exceed our expectations, et cetera, et cetera, of, of whatever it is. So you kind of you're not giving them a form letter, but you're kind of saying we hope that you enjoyed the show and that you, we made your job easier for you. So right, there's little tips yeah, like that, that that they can that you right. that you're the hero mm-hmm. because you hired the right employee, you know, the right guy and or whatever. So. Uh, those are little things, you know, that you can kind of put in their ear when, I guess, put on email. So right. whenever they send that back to you, they're kind of restating what you've just said. They you know. help them write the letter. That's kind of right. You've mm-hmm. almost written the letter for them, and they just kind of have to reword it in their own words. Right. You know, kind of a thing. Uh, so, uh, again, you're not lecturing on, on how to promote yourself not anymore. A, or anything. Yeah, because I would have to redo that whole lecture. And I have, and there's so, you know, I, I was thinking about this on the way down when I would do that lecture, the older magicians would go oh wow you know if i would have known that you know 20 years ago that'd have been great but i'm not going to do all that work now Mm -hmm. and i kind of feel the same way now it's like (laughs) oh my gosh instagram and uh, twitter and linkedin and all these things i'm like i don't know if i want to do all that that's a a good point do you (laughs) i feel like i know how those guys felt (laughs) do you have to hit them all or is there something that is going to be i think it depends on your demographic in other words you might want to use tiktok to reach a certain group right uh, uh, or whatever and some for LinkedIn that seem more business oriented. So it kind of depends upon who your demographic is and what you're what what you're trying to reach. Right. I mean there's trying. there's so much out there now besides just paper. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Uh, I mean I know you're on Facebook and Instagram and other but you but you have to constantly uh, keep work that. at it. You kind of, that's yeah. Right. That's right. Because what happens is I understand with Facebook is you are irrelevant after an hour and a half. Because if you post something, it will stay there before something else oh, comes over yeah, and right. pushes it down further because of the way their the algorithms feed. work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, down the feed. So after an hour and a half, you know, it's gone. So mm-hmm. it needs to be something that is going to be uh, constant and just ongoing uh, to, uh, to attract their attention, mm-hmm. you know, on that then as well. And Instagram, I think, a, a lot of the same thing then too because Facebook, I believe, has purchased uh, Instagram uh, then as well. Now, as far as the shows you do, I recall seeing some years ago also you were doing some theaters as the Magic Lady. Do you still do that as far as a theater show? Or have you just done that a couple of times? Or? Well, now I'm kind of switched gears because um, I have this lecture called the Magical Those Magical Dames, hmm. and it's a lecture of the history of women in magic. Okay, and I put it together. The first time I did it was for a lay audience. I was asked by my local art center for March, because March is Women's History Month, to put something together. So I'm like, hey, I'm kind of on to something here. Yeah. And I've, I've sold it to libraries for adult programming. I was like t- tunnel vision focused. Well, yeah, they have to have adult programs too. Sure. So now is what I'm doing. I'm putting together a performing arts center list so they can have the lecture and then a show. Mm-hmm. And that's how I'm going to package it. Hmm. So to go back into like doing the theater shows and with that lecture are you still finding people and how far back do you go i mean you just go back a generation or two no i I start with adelaide herman of course in the 1800s i i feature adelaide herman um talma susie wandis june horwitz and then end with lady houdini which who is Kristen johnson so it starts 
you know, in the 1800s and it moves forward. And then after Kristen, I kind she of... She won those the Georgia Magnet? Mm-mm. No, okay. No. She d- she does. Oh, I know who you're talking she about. D- yes. she, does, she, does water, she has the record, you know, beat Houdini's record for the water church. Wasn't she also tapes. on Penn and Teller? Uh, I don't think she's no, been on maybe Penn and Teller. Else, okay. They do a lot of fairs, she and her husband, Kevin, Ridge, Kevin Ridgeway. And Different ladies. Christian. Okay. okay. Yeah. So there's just a few people, and so you kind of go in the past right. and, and go forward. To me. And then, you know, I talk about we all stand on each other's shoulders. Yeah. So then I feature, like, some of the, 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 the next generation below me, like Jessica Jane, uh, Kayla Drescher, mm-hmm. um, yeah, uh, Lucy Darling. Lucy yeah. Darling. Yeah, I'm trying to think who else. Oh, uh, there are a lot. So yeah, women today. Yeah, Alexander Duvivier. Right. Uh, golly. Yeah. So I, I like show. Connie Boyd is really right keeping us uh, up to date on. She's doing a great she job. Is. I get things from her all the time. You know, of women and magic, and it's not just people now, but also, I mean, uh, Tony, Sp- uh, uh, Joni Spina, and then going back even further, she's finding these videos of different uh, ladies and performing, and just uh, keeping that ever present mm-hmm. in our minds. Mm-hmm. Uh, has she talked with you, or um, we've talked you? a little? And uh, she's she has such a long list. Oh yeah, I'm just waiting for my name. I think to up. appear on the list <laughs> because we've exchanged some emails about things, and I I know I'm on her radar. Ariane Black up in uh, Canada, and right? she was in Vegas uh, for a long time. Has been working on a coffee table book, right? Uh, of women, you know about this? Uh huh. Okay, so. Talk about that a little bit, if, if what you know about that. Well, she's because uh, I'm supposed to be writing the piece on Sonny Johnson, who is Kristen Johnson's mom, Lady Houdini's mom. That's right. Okay, now it's, now it's coming back yes, to you. Yes, so, yes. And I'm like, I've got to get that to Aaron. So, yeah, I mean, it was a year ago Kristen asked me to do it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I got But it's, it's a coffee table book, and so she doesn't need like a whole big story because she's just going to have little blurbs right. about each women. And, and it's mainly for photos. Right. Mm-hmm. But it goes back, I don't know how far. I mean, uh, well, let me take that back. I think it's going to be like a two-volume set. So the first is going to be like up through the the 1970s, and then mm-hmm. the next will be the ni- 1970 through today. Okay. Which I think is a great idea to have a two-volume set. <laughs> Two, well, yes, mm-hmm. right. Um, and again, all photos. On the other hand, uh, Charles Green the third is working on a book on Ionia. I know. That's going to be great. I can't wait for that one to come out because there's not a bunch about her. And just like Talma, there's not much, a lot on Talma. How would you find information on her then? Um, basically, uh, online. I just did some mm-hmm. research online, and I really have to – to look at the museum, the American Museum of Magic in Marshall, to see if they have a folder on her. Hmm. Well, who inspired you? Who inspired me? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, my dad's to blame to get me into magic. Uh-huh. And, of course, Neil Foster, because I took Chavez from Neil. And uh, the only woman, when I was coming up through the ranks, was June Horwitz. Okay. Because I remember Maria uh, Schweder, right? Uh, Mike Power's wife was uh, taking sh- the Chavez course, right? I don't, was she taking around the same time? She as took you it or? after me. After you, mm-hmm. okay, okay. Um, were there other women who were taking the class when you did? Nope, I was the I was the third woman to take it. Oh. from Neil. Wow. Okay. Who were the others before the, you? Before was uh, Lucy Smalley from the Detroit area, and she has now gotten out of magic and um, living in Colorado. Mm-hmm. And she now, she changed her name. She go, now goes by Raven to Koi. Does she perform? No, I wish she would. I wish mm. she'd come back. And then there, uh, the I don't remember the first woman that took it from Neil. And she just kind of, she took it from Neil. And Neil even said that she kind of vanished. Just vanished. Yeah, okay. vanished, just poof. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, and because I'm always uh, curious about that. When I was talking with Alexandra Duvier recently, when I was in Paris, uh, she was inspired by uh, seeing uh, Lisa Mena. Oh, wow, that's yeah. good. And, um, yeah, uh, so, which is another name in magic who is a force. Right. You know, that she's been around right. you know, for, for quite some time and has done a lot for magic in, in general. Mm-hmm. And great trade show person and, and, and everything then, too, and is helping... Yeah, uh, communities that are impoverished. Right, her cause to wonder is a great idea. Wonder. Yeah, that's right. Have you ever thought about doing something kind of like that? I mean, uh, charitable kind of. Uh, I don't know. I have so many ideas, and I don't. I, <laughs> the follow through is right. Yeah, right. 
You can appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Ideas, yeah, are, are, are great. Uh, so uh, talking about children's shows uh, then as well, Did uh, do you have a character when you go in to do a kid's show, like when you're standing in the living room in front of the fireplace, you know, for the kids and the moms are there drinking wine in the kitchen together? I mean, are, do you have, uh, like when you're doing festivals, you have a, uh, an outfit, and we'll come to that in a minute, but do you have a character? I have two characters, but they're just for um, Halloween. I'm Wanda the Wacky Witch. Mm-hmm. And at Christmas, I'm Christmas Carol, Santa's number one helper elf. Okay. I'm like the head of the elves. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so well, those are the only two theme ones. That, and and if, so if, it, if it's a birthday party in May, I'm just Magic Lady. Okay. And so as Magic Lady, do you wear like a tuxedo you have oh no i got dress some fun or? dresses i okay you know i i kind of uh anything to buy a costume yes and a fun dress okay and uh, i have um i have a, one that's like an alice in wonderland theme print and another one is um i don't know they're just fun i found them online they're kind of retro looking they're mm-hmm. kind of re- reproduction vintage dresses okay and and that's what you wear. Yeah, like that's why I wear for my kid shows. For kid shows. Uh-huh. Now, do you do strolling cocktail magic uh, or anything like that for companies? Sure. Now, I assume that you wear like cocktail dress and something more elegant. Well, I you know I'm really been thinking about this because um, I've been looking at the, the, you, know, you can buy a t- tuxedo that's definitely that's made for a woman, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking about maybe getting one of those. They're just more tailored. They're more right. elegant looking. And you can have the pockets right. made wherever you right. want and however you want. Because now I, I bought a man's tuxedo jacket, mm-hmm. a small man's tu- because of all the pockets. Sure, of course. And that's what I've used in the past, but I kind of want to... wear a dress then? I kind of want to get it a little bit more feminine. Uh-huh. Yes, to wear a dress would be with it. Okay. Easy way to do it, you know. Uh, as opposed to wearing tuxedo pants right. and men's pants. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I would think so as well. And something by wearing a, uh, you know, having a handbag... You'd be oh scared. right! You're, you're you can hang it on the back you. of the table and the mm-hmm. back of a chair, and you can have everything with you. That's right. That's right. Uh, the reason I was asking about that because it has to do with just women aging in magic and how do you age into a character? Whereas uh, when a uh, a man ages, he's still wearing a tuxedo, right? You know? And unfortunately, some people are still wearing, still, still wearing those flowery <laughs> kind of ruffled <laughs> shirts. They can like okay, yeah. from a mariachi band. <laughs> that's right. That's right. From something in the '60s or whatever this. Yeah. They, anyhow. So, uh, but I was talking, I, I've brought this up several times in previous podcasts where i uh, talking with Trixie Bond that she and Lisa Mena and Becky Blaney were talking about their characters as they would evolve as, uh, as we all get older. And Trixie had said, okay, well, I want to age into a character. And I'm talking about working for corporate audiences and everything mm-hmm. too. That she would just dress uh, appropriately uh, in some sort of a cocktail dress, because that was what my wife had said also. And Kathy had said, "I don't think they want to see some lady who's my age wearing a short skirt." And I said, "Well, of course they don't, you know. Or, well, you know, right. despite how I would think, but I think as far as the audience goes, that it should be something more elegant, and they could appreciate that. And you'd look elegant mm-hmm. wearing whatever. So that's kind of the direction she had decided to go." Lisa, then I think, was embracing this character of an older lady that was uh, kind of cantankerous. Uh, uh, oh, that's right. She did do bitty. that. Yeah, she right. Had, like a like I, bag lady kind of almost. I said I was not going to say <laughs> oh, bag lady because I I did I, I recorded an episode with Lisa. And I said bag lady. She said no, I'm not a bag lady. I know. I listened to that. Yeah, because she was thinking the bag lady be like an old homeless lady. Right. Like, no, 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 no. It's just she carries a bag and she mm-hmm. would hit somebody. Like I'm always thinking like, Ruth Buzzy right, on Laugh In. Okay, right. those of us who were of that age. Mm-hmm. remember her and then on the other hand you had becky blaney who had decided that uh, i want to remain forever young so she's still had some work done so she <laughs> you know looks great and young uh, as well as keeping the same act and some of the same jokes and everything but basically where she was talking about being a, a beauty queen or one you know miss mushroom or whatever you know mm-hmm. that, uh, so and you know having these trophies or whatever kind of keeping the same act but trying to maintain that youth. So one is kind of tried to remain young. One has kind of embraced the current, and the other one is kind of, okay, I'm going to age into this person so I don't have to dye my hair any longer because I'm kind of <laughs> I'm kind be that of, person. I'm kind of on uh, Trixie's. On, <laughs> yeah. on, uh, Lisa's. Uh, right. Yeah. I'm not going to dye my hair anymore. And <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So 
that's what I was going to say. Are, do you see a character of you developing or aging into, uh, or are you going to change? You going to stay what I think you are? Or I, I, do you see your? Do yeah. you see anything that has changed in your act? I guess it's, boy, this is taking me five minutes to get to this. Right? <laughs> are you changing? Have you changed? Do you expect to? Um, and how will you and into what? Wow, I don't really never given that a lot of thought because I just. Continue to do what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, I just, yeah, continue to do what I do. Yeah. And not. it's just that at some point, I would think in all of our lives, they, the audience would not care to see me up on stage at my age, at, at, some, at right. some age, mm-hmm. and, uh, doing whatever I'm doing. Or if I'm trying to keep current, it's like, what's that old guy doing it, trying to act like, Somebody wearing spandex, you know. Oh, right, it, right. I can see that point. Whatever. Uh-huh. And same thing, I think, with, with some women, you know. Uh, and so how do you age appropriately right, that's with true. your act? That's true, because, like, my manipulation act, I'm, like, looking at my dress going, I don't know if that's great dress to wear anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, it's really backless. And, mm-hmm. um, um, of course, I have, you know, aging i got uh-huh. some love handles and i'm like yeah. that just doesn't look good anymore right. mm, i have to look for a new dress i think well same with me i've had to mm-hmm. buy new jackets and everything then too i don't want to have something that's going to be pinched in the front when i button my jacket right. so you don't want to look like uh you've you've you're out outweigh your outfit or mm-hmm. it gets to be too old again we're talking about ruffled shirts or whatever you right. know, just uh, you need to kind of keep current with the with the fashion i would think right too so um anyhow yeah i was just curious to see if you had given that much thought as to what you're going to be doing and how your act would change right but so you do still kind of a chavez act when you're talking about manipulation and everything then too so uh is that something you think aside from a demonstration of skill the audience appreciates from the standpoint it's like wow that's pretty cool yeah i think so okay. it, you know and the, the funny thing is that when you do the billiard balls i don't know how many times people have come up to me and said wow the things you did with those eggs that's interesting and i'm like r- r- oh okay i just yeah. let them believe i let them believe that they thought they were eggs mm-hmm. and like, but they're round they aren't odd shaped like are they white yeah they're white okay so they're not like colored uh, okay red or whatever so you don't do a color changing your balls mm-hmm. are just okay. They both right. are interesting. Do you use fakinis? Yep. Okay. Now, of course, fakini uh, has since been, I think, uh, someone else has taken over that uh, company. I think it's kind of like gone by the wayside. His son tried to, to keep it up for a while, mm-hmm. and um, I just think it just kind of disappeared. Uh, well, I don't know if anybody's making them anymore. They are. Uh, okay. So, uh, a couple of friends of mine out in, um, in uh, South Carolina in Charleston. Uh, are, oh, okay. Are, are making those. Well, that's so, good. So you know, yeah. So, but you still got your old props. I still have my from Frank okay. Radke. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I remember Frank. <laughs> so I just. Uh, so, but what I was asking, I guess, is and you've answered the question that uh, of whether the audience responds to that or if that seems almost outdated because they're seeing magic from Penn and Teller and Masters of Illusion mm-hmm. and the kinds of things. I just wondered if Chavez is kind of if you see that as being outdated. I don't think so because people still pr- appreciate it as, like you said. A skill, a, skill a, a demonstration of skill. Mm-hmm. It's something that people haven't seen, that, that the mm-hmm. lay audience, if they have never seen any, any manipulation. Because mm-hmm. with my lecture, the the history lecture, I do the billiard balls for Susie Wandis. Mm-hmm. I do the coin pail for Talma. And I have to throw, I have to do something for June because people don't understand what close-up magic is. Mm-hmm. So I add a little magic into it. And people, they like it because it's pretty and they've never seen anything like it. And right. oh, they, they think you're really talented because you can do those things. Right. And June Horowitz, for those who don't know, uh, and some of these other ladies, we'll talk about those in a second as well, but June was uh, the first woman president of the International Brotherhood of Magicians and is from Michigan. Right. Uh, and she passed, uh, she lived to be 100, didn't she? She was like a month shy of her was it hundred and second birthday? Yeah, I think and she was doing 100. she mm-hmm. was doing magic up until like the week before she passed. I remember seeing her at a convention in the wheelchair and and go over to talk to her and she had cards or something in her hands. She said, Let me show you something and so she And was, she had a quick wit. She still mm-hmm. had that wit about her. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, up till the end. Mm-hmm. And Sonny Johnson was the one who you were talking about earlier, who really was kind of a caretaker. Right. You know, worked with her. We'd, you know, ta- we'd take her to all the conventions because yeah. June couldn't drive anymore. Yeah. Uh, now, Susie Wand is, I understand there's a new book that's out about her. I forgot who it was, somebody overseas. Oh, Colby, Colby, the, what is his last name? But he's from Belgium. Yeah. Really nice guy. Um, great book. Well, you know, it's a... Uh, you, has that what you've used for research? Well, or? now I have to retell Susie's story because I was telling it wrong. Oh, really? After I read so the book. what do you say now? So, um, so tell me a little bit about her story. Well, because, um, let's see, um, she, she, was, um, she was born into a show business family. Uh-huh. Her father... Basically, they traveled around Belgium in like a gypsy wagon performing. And Susie was born in that gypsy wagon. In what year, approximately? Oh, or? gosh. The, I, I don't in have the that In the early 1900s yeah. or late 1800s? Uh, um, was it the late 1800s? Yeah. Or she might have even been in the early 1900s. She mm. was born. And uh, what I was telling wrong in her father's act, she did this, this uh, she had a violin act, and she was billed as Miss White Flower in the dancing violin. And I always thought the magic came first and then she added that it was the other way around oh. she did the dancing violin first and the magic came afterwards the dancing violin yeah she built herself as miss white flower and the dancing violin so what? she she played the violin and did a little dance routine with it oh oh so so it wasn't something kind of like norm nielsen no oh, no okay so she would just dance and she was right. holding a violin right oh. and playing violin music the violin and, didn't yeah do something and so i was telling that wrong um what else was i telling wrong where did you get the wrong or misinformation? Uh, it was because the, the the book wasn't out yet, and so I I got it from uh, you know the internet re- researching mm-hmm. Susie, and um, there were you can find little blurbs. Yeah, out Yeah, there was there. no book out right. about her right. until this one came out. Right, right. right. Okay, so it was just snippets of wherever you found. Right. However, it, you know she mm-hmm. performed in Europe through World War One, World War Two. Okay, which was um, you know amazing that she did that, supported herself. Um, I, oh, that was something else that she performed with her mother as the Wanda sisters, mm-hmm. and I was. T- the story was that um, an agent said that a you know a mother daughter act isn't going to sell very good. But mm. you, and Susie's mother was young enough to be passed off as her sister. That story is all wrong. When they went huh. to get um, visas. When they, because they left Belgium and they went to Italy for World War during World War One to perform. So when they got their visa, that at the consulate, the guy said, "Oh, you're young enough to be. You look like sisters." Hmm. That's how it came about. It wasn't an agent, so I was telling that wrong, and that was in the book. Kobe's a great guy. I had him on a call, a Zoom call, because I did a little lecture about Susie Wandis for the American Museum of Magic. Okay. They have a lecture series. They, mm-hmm. um, the next one coming up is going to be Thurston, and Jim Steinmeier is going to do it. Mm-hmm. So I had him on the call, and he had to stay up to like 3 o'clock in the morning because it was 7 o'clock here, and he was a great guy. I, I look forward to meeting him someday. Why did he decide to write a book about Susie? Did he meet somebody in the family, or what inspired uh, because him? Because Susie is like a, like a, a celebrity. Over in, in Belgium? In Belgium. Really? And his, Colby's dad That's didn't. That's not her real name, obviously. No, her real name is Jeannie, Jeannie Van Dyke. Okay, so Van Dyke was a, more of a Belgian name. Uh, yeah, and I, that, was, that was a story that I told wrong, too. Well, she changed her name to Susie when she heard this song, If You Knew Susie. Like I Know Susie. Right. And then um, uh, I, th- I was telling her story that her father changed the name to the Wandas because he thought it sounded more aristocratic than, hmm. than um, Van Dyke. Okay. I thought it was because of Magic Wands. Uh, nope. And, that, huh. and actually, it wasn't even Susie's father that changed it. It was her mother that changed it. Changed it. Okay. And her mother was, she was like an agent. She was really... Kind of a, uh, um, what do you call it, a, a TV mom? or a Well, she really wasn't a stage... Well, yeah, stage she was mother. kind of a stage mother. She really drove Susie, and, but she was a very good businesswoman. It's, mm. It comes throughout in the book. It's Because it, she's the one that would do all the booking and all the promotional and... Yeah. And would kind of control right, her career. Right, yeah, right, right, yeah, 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 right, yeah. exactly. Was her dad involved much in that? Her dad then? died young. Oh, okay. And that's when they... That's when they had 
they started performing then as the three Wandas because it was Susie, her mother, and her brother. Okay. After the the Wandas. After yeah, her father died, and then when her brother joined the um, Belgian army in World War One, that's when mm-hmm. they became the Wanda sisters. So okay. they changed the act, the name, a couple of times. And he never came back. Nope, he never came back to magic. So it became just Susie. I assume her mother died then. No, or? but well, then um, her her mother aged out. Aged out. Okay. Couldn't be passed off as a sister anymore. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then Susie had to choose: is she going to continue on because she still performed the violin act too? Oh. Sure. As okay. part of the the show, when they were performing as the Wanda sisters, mm-hmm. just to make the sh- the act longer, she would still perform as Miss Whiteflower and the dancing violin. Mm-hmm. So she had to choose between the two disciplines because she liked that act and she liked being a magician. But then a female magician was going to sell a lot better, so she chose magic. I see. Yeah, because there are probably and, so and very she, few. That, of right, them and then she became Susie Wanda's the lady with the fairy fingers. The lady with the fairy fingers. Why? Mm-hmm. Because uh, she was able to. Because, oh, her manipulations were. Oh, she. Oh, her manipula. I'm still trying to figure it out. Have you seen videos? Uh huh. Okay. Um, so Talma, of course, with Leo, Le- Le- Leroy, uh, Talma, and Bosco. Right. Uh, as I recall, she was quite a finger flicker too. She did a lot of coin work. Is right. That right. Right. And she yeah. sold herself as the queen of coins after she it. after she saw T. Nelson Downs, king of coins in london that's mm-hmm. what inspired her to learn a coin act of her own and was she then picked up by leroy she was already add- married she was already married to Le- leroy okay when when she saw t nelson downs perform oh okay so, so then leroy helped her with the coin act to add to his right, act right and that well she performed on her own as well, and then he added it to the Leroy, Tom, and Bosco show, too. See, that was where I was confused. I thought that she had her own separate act, so that was it. She right. did, but kind of under his tutelage, if you will, after right. already being married and having seen that. And right. Because I know then also Bosco was added later as well. Right. Okay. And he was the comedy Com- relief. Right, right. Uh, and they lasted for a long time, which goes back again, kind of again, full circle, I guess, and talking about aging out or whatever, because Leroy, as he got older, I understand he had attended some SAM convention, and he had performed, and people were saying how poorly that memory was of him performing. Really? Yeah, they wow. said it was, was horrible. It's one of those things that he should have quit, and, and so that way people have a better memory of the way he was, mm-hmm. rather than him trying to prove he still had it, because he didn't, didn't still have, have it. it at that point. So that's the thing. At some mm-hmm. point, it's kind of like, yeah, he, 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 you're starting to slip, and right. you have to recognize that, you know, and kind of move out and move on. Uh, so she continued, and it, as I recall, too, they the three of them broke up and kind of went, well, I say three of them. Bosco, I think, went his own way. They had a couple of different Boscos, didn't they? Or? I don't know, because there, there's not like a, a lot. Stooges, yeah, yeah there's they, not you know. a lot to on, on them either. Um, but they, let's see, where, where were they? They were, on, they were in Belgium as well. And the act, I think, really broke up when Leroy and Tama moved permanently to the United States. Okay, Bosco stayed over there. Yeah, maybe. Okay, and you don't know whether that he was uh, replaced over here, Bosco, uh, in, with uh, their act. Uh, no, I don't. The, okay. f- mm-hmm. From what I could tell, I don't think so. So they just kind of faded out as right. far as Tama goes. Mm-hmm. That was her, her career was really more over in Belgium. Right. Now, prior to that, it was Adelaide Herman you were talking about. Right, Adelaide Herman. And she was also the wife, wasn't she? Because she had taken over after her husband died. Right. After okay. uh, after Alexander, Alexander Herman was killed by the... he you No, know, he died He died on the road in the middle of a tour. Was and it a heart attack or something? I, or? I didn't even... You know, okay. The research I didn't say that I've done what he okay. died of, but I assume, you know, it was a heart attack or something. And, um, and they were deeply in debt because mm-hmm. they, they were like, Living a, a lifestyle. A, a, a lifestyle. You know, the train car and all that. The train car, private yacht, you know, big mansion on Long Island. And to pay the bills, she had to take up the reins as uh-huh. a magician. Okay. And that's how she became then. And they didn't, the two of them have a child and that son went on and did he do something for a little while? Gee, did they have a child? I didn't think they did. Because I thought there was someone else after Adelaide. No, or was she the last of the dynasty? Because there were some others, I thought, before Alexander, unless I'm confusing that with another family I don't dynasty. know. Okay. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know how much research you've yeah, done Yeah, because the this. research that, you know, well, I don't think they had any children. Okay. After seeing, um, because the real expert on Adelaine is um, 
Margaret Steele. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so you've got a lot of information from her? Well, in her book. Okay. Well, yeah, that's right. Uh, and where is Margaret, by the way? Is she Where she live? She's, she's, she's Midwest? On the, no, she's in uh, New Jersey, the East Coast someplace. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, she. I've, I've heard her, her lecture before mm. then also. So you're still learning about some of these people. And right. That you're... And you, and it's, it's research like, was wrong. Yeah, and it, it kind of starts you on a path to, to wanting to find out more. Yes. Well, that was what I was going to ask next. As far as learning more, have there been some other women in magic that you've been wanting to expand to and thinking, okay, well, I'm inspired by this. I understand that. And so that touches this person's life. And because you've kind of got a path that you said of those five ladies. Right. And I forgot to include Dell in there, too. Dell O'Dell. Dell O'Dell. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Because she was just right after Susie Wanda's time, right? Well, she was in like in the nineteen, yeah, the forties, the fifties. Mm -hmm. She, you know, she was on that tail end of the nightclub, the, the was nightclub circuit. Then, right? Yep. Okay, because Celeste just passed a few years ago, right? Uh, recently, then too, whereas Del O'Dell had gone before that. So. Yeah, she she died in uh, nineteen sixty two. I can remember that because that's the year I was born. Now hmm. they can do the math and figure out how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are in twenty two. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're a young lady to me. Oh, gee, uh, thanks. <laughs> uh, so I now want to go back to who, talking about some of the festivals that you were saying that you were doing. I was talking with you last evening thinking you would had like a steampunk type of uh, outfit, and you said that wasn't necessarily the case. It's, it's kind of of the 1800s, but not a steampunk-ish. Yeah, it's kind of like steampunk-ish because I do wear a top hat, and mm -hmm. um, it's more of an 1800s costume. I perform in a split riding skirt and the... Blouse poofy with sleeves. poofy sleeves and my top hat. And I, I, I started doing that for the Yankee Peddler Festival here in Ohio. It's the longest running festival in Ohio. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, it's coming up on 48 years. Wow. And it's a, a 1776 is an early American festival. It's like a Renaissance festival, just a different time period. Right. We're talking about like right. Civil War time, right. basically. Right, Civil mm -hmm. War. Um, frontier yep. days. Right, when Ohio was the frontier. Right. <laughs> <laughs> is that the one that you were saying also is kind of starting to falter? Yeah, it's bit? kind of on life Last support legs. because uh, they're losing vendors. The vendors are dying, and it's a juried show, and you have to prove that you are a crafter and you've made it yourself. You can't sell knockoffs from China or anything at the festival. And and what the, kind of things do they sell? I mean, are they oh, pewter mugs? Or yeah, it's, they... it's pottery, um, pewter mugs, uh, leather, baskets, um, tin work. I'm trying to go around the festival of people's, yeah. people's booze that I know, pressed it's, flowers. Okay, so it's not like a regular type of festival that I've been to where you just have somebody, a lot, lot of artists with paintings uh, or uh, some other people selling herbs and perfumes and, right. and jewelry mm -hmm. so it's not that kind of a thing no uh, uh some a little bit of jewelry a little bit of jewelry um dried flower dried flower arrangements mm -hmm. dried flower wreaths and that takes place where and to um outside of canton ohio in this little town called canal fulton okay and the festival people rent a campground for three weekends in a row okay and so it doesn't go on during the week only on the weekends yeah just on the weekends so do you camp there or do you drive over no i actually i come to stay since i live in northern michigan my parents live like three hours from the festival mm -hmm. so i come and i stay the whole month of september with my parents yeah and i drive over early saturday morning and now i've made friends with one of the vendors so i stay with her mm -hmm. which is nice and so i work saturday and sunday i and how many shows a day do you do uh about four are they on the clock or kind of as you go to draw I, a crowd? It's almost like busking. I can choose okay. when and where I want to perform. They yeah. give me free range, and I have to stop the crowd, and I don't use a lot of proppy, plasticky-looking stuff. Yeah. I have a hand-tooled leather bag that I carry. Um, they do let me carry all my schlep all my stuff in a wagon so I don't have to schlep it around. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Um, and I, But after doing it for so many years, I know the the place is now in the festival where I'm going to get a good crowd. What is your opening line, or what do you do to draw a crowd? I mean, you know, you're not banging plates together. No, you're I not a, juggling I or anything. And so, I blow a whistle, okay, okay. and I, uh, I, I'm i loud. Yeah. And um, With a sound system? or No, nope, they, they, they won't let me use a sound system because mm -hmm. it's not period. They, they're really, that makes sense. They're really... Uh, diligent about you use a megaphone being right <laughs> i yeah. know taylor martin uses one he has because okay. he's got a period 
Um, Does he work the same festival? No, he works, but he works a lot of the same kind of festivals. I thought he did. Mm-hmm. Okay. And in Michigan as well. Right. Um, he, does a, he does a big one, I think, in Pennsylvania, one in Tennessee. I've seen pictures of him, uh-huh. like on Instagram, with the three cornered hat. And right. Stuff, yeah. In Canada, but he hasn't been able to get in the last two years. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's fun. I really like performing that character. I call the, um, and she's kind of evolved over the years. And the people on the festival named me. They gave me her name. She's Charmin J. Charming J. Uh-huh. Charmin J. Charmin. Charmin J. Okay. And since your costume is period and you can't use sound, uh, electrical sound system, do you try to recreate some period magic pieces? And like you say, you got a leather satchel that you're carrying but i mean i assume cups and balls and things perhaps would be standard because that's been around forever but, right but are there other kinds of things i mean i wouldn't imagine you use like mac magic types of no, things with no chinese cuneiforms on nope it and, I, yeah. I do the linking rings i do a card that um you, you force a card and but then you, you shoot a gun at it and i have the breakaway gun mm-hmm. and uh there's a bullet hole in their chosen card then yeah so I do that. I dress a kid up. Like, Sounds like an old Carol Fox routine. Um, no, actually, it's a Terry Seabrook team. Okay, it okay. was in Terry's book. Okay. I do. So I do that. I do um, the the paper hat tear, the bonnet tear, because it looks like a right. period bonnet. Yep, I yep. buy lots of those looks for like September. Betsy Ross, yeah. Right. And I do, let's see, the linking rings, the bullet card, um, Professor's Nightmare. Because it's rope and not plasticky. Right. right. Um, but you consciously are looking for things right. that will be more period right. appropriate. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, do you work other festivals then as well, or just? That, well, yeah, I work other festivals. That's the only one I do ha- that have the character, the character for. Right. So the other ones you can do anything that you want, like right. you would normally do when you're busking. Right. Okay. And what are your go-to things when you're generally busking? When I'm busking? Well, linking rings because they're loud. You can clang them around. Right. <laughs> and and uh, I'm honestly, if I get a kid up first right away to help me out, that helps st- stop a crowd. Mm-hmm. And usually, uh, basically, I do a lot of the same magic that I do in that festival show for my busking show, and I'm just not in period costume. Okay. Because I know it works. Sure. And sure. I do, um, what, the chase the ace because it's, the big cards, mm-hmm. and they can see them, and it's kind of like a swindle. Um, the once again, the hat tear, linking rings, bullet card. When you use a bullet card, uh, when it has to do with a gun, right. I can understand that when you're doing that at the Yankee gathering, right. or whatever the thing is. Uh, but on other places, uh, when you would pull out, even though it's a funny looking gun, it's a breakaway gun. Uh-huh. Have you had any pushback? Or nope, anybody no, no pushback. Okay. I, and actually, I used to use a regular blank gun, and yeah. I got a little uncomfortable with that with all that's going on. That's my point. So, so that's why I did the breakaway gun, and mm-hmm. then I have the old bang gun. And then I'm like, sure. oh, well, I'm going to get my pirate gun now. Yeah. Yeah. And people think that's funny. Because it's kind of goofy looking. Right. Yeah. Okay. That, and then, then, then the bang flag comes out and they think it's goofy and when funny. When somebody's going to be working a festival, how did you go about approaching them? Was there someone else already working there? Did they have an open audition or how did you, well, you know, again, just thinking of people who are looking for other alternate forms of revenue and perhaps if they want to go into busking in a festival, how do you go about finding that kind of a job? Well, it, I had a, um, I had a, I found a booklet someplace that was all of the festivals east of the Mississippi. And so then I put together a list of like Indiana, Michigan, Ohio. And that's back when I was doing all my direct mailing. And that's how I got my festivals then. Hmm. And also, you stop at all these like welcome centers where they have all the brochures Mm -hmm. and they have a a whole booklet like get their summer festivals their winter festivals and i would i would take those and i would put together my own mailing list from yeah. from from those so okay. i you know i got it for free i didn't have to buy a yeah. list it took a little bit of work but that's how i did it yep if you want the if mm-hmm. you want a job you gotta do right. the work to get the work. right yeah i don't know many female buskers uh, billy kids the only other one aside from you that comes to mind have you run into many or talk with any female buskers there used to be um no, just um, there's Tommy Tropic, who is a great busker in northern Michigan. He's a juggler, mm-hmm. and he dated a girl years ago, and that was the only other busker I knew. 
female busker. She he met him. She met. They met busking in Key West in the winter time, and that was the only other female I've. And does she met. still busk or? I don't know. You know, she, since they broke up, that relationship broke right. up. I don't know what happened to her. Right. Hmm. Uh, yeah, because I would think that'd be difficult for a, a woman because you are carrying a lot of cash with you and you're working sometimes in good areas and sometimes not necessarily or you're there are, there are big groups of people and, right and so that's why i like the bucket because i can have a lid on it oh i see and i cut a hole in it yeah and they and they and they can't see how much money i have in there either oh i see okay as opposed to having a hat right they can kind of mm-hmm. okay so they don't necessarily have you ever had any situation where you felt like you were in danger nope not yet Okay, I don't mm-hmm. want to jinx this thing. No. <laughs> okay. I have the kids look in and go, oh, wow, there's a lot of money in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but have you ever, just for the heck of it, said, uh, I think I'm going to give this a try on the street over here, like, you know, when you're in a, in a mall or if you go no, to Key West or something? I mean, that's true busking. That's the, what the, I mean. I've, that's tough work. I've never really done that. The busking gigs that I have do in northern Michigan this summer, it, there are, it's, the town puts it on. Mm-hmm. And they, they're sponsored events. They're, they're sponsored events, and mm-hmm. and they do it so they they're going to have entertainers show up every week. Okay, so we are contracted, and they do that. So you know, if it was just a true busking where it was a free fall for anybody, right. there would be some days or some weeks where they would have way too many entertainers, you never would, know. and there would be some weeks that they wouldn't have enough. So that's right. why they 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 and we get paid a little stipend. And then we get to work for tips to keep all of our tips. Yeah, because you're not worried. You're not so thinking about going to like New Orleans, right? So I've never done. You know, that's that's that's. I don't. Know, I I suppose I could do it, but that's tough work. Have you uh, followed and been inspired by people? You know, like Cosmo, um, you know, and Cellini, and some of these others. That right, have, and who is? Um, why can't I think of his name? Jeff Sheridan. Right. Bobby Bobby Maverick, he was a great yep. busker. And Eric Evans. I've lost contact with Chris him. Chris Capehart. I, yep. Mm-hmm. I just wonder if any of those guys, you know, kind of inspired you to. It was Bobby walking, him. watching Bobby at the get together. Mm-hmm. And he really helped me out and took me aside and said, this is what you yeah, got to do. And you and John Sturck are the only people I can think of who do busking. Are there some others that kind of. Oh, yeah. Bus- John Sturck, myself, Torino, John Lachance. Even Bibic filled a couple of spots. Hmm. So, is that something that you're going to continue to do? You really enjoy? Sure, it's fun. It's just, you know, it's and and, you're do it as and long it's, as it's good. Fun. Yeah, it's fun and and people people that come to Colon when they find out about the Magic Festival, yeah, they expect to see that. Sure. So it's a good thing that the, yeah. the, the chamber started doing it. Right, because they got something to do during the daytime for people right. who are tourists coming in, because there's not a lot of stuff there's not to, a lot to, to do. see or do. In and they're Colin. like, where's all the magic? Right. If they are coming in for the evening show, what are they going to do in the afternoon? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they got to go downtown and see the buskers. Right. That is a lot of fun, and I, I, I certainly enjoy that. Well, listen, uh, name my podcast, as you know, and you listen, you're, you listen, don't you? I do. I listen. <laughs> you're my coach in the morning. You're, you're my, I listen when I'm working out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so you have to, like, start cheering me on or something. <laughs> <laughs> when you start to stretch. That's right. right. Uh, so what is your magic word or phrase? I, it is nice. Nice gets you a long way. Be nice. Be friendly. It just it, it, yeah, everybody. Be yeah. nice to everybody because it gets you a long way. Right. It gets you. It gets you a long way. And mm-hmm. you know, even just uh, you know the the cashier girl. Just she might be having a bad day, and just be nice to her. And mm-hmm. yeah, not because you're trying to get something out of it, but just because you're a nice person. Right. Yeah. Be nice to everybody because right. that's just what you should. Right. Do, yeah. Basically. And it gets you. It gets you. A, being nice gets you a long way. Yeah. It, and it might open doors, but again, that's not ultimately what you're looking for. But great advice. That's good. Janie, thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. Glad we had some time to chat. Boy, that time went fast. I know. How, <laughs> how long was that? Really? Is it time for dinner? Yeah. It's just about time. In fact, yeah, I just got a text over there. We're supposed to be going to dinner here shortly. So uh, we got to get ready. So okay. for the Magic Word Podcast, that was Janie Taylor. This is Scotty Out.
Well, Jania, thank you very much for being my guest this week. And again, I apologize for not having a chilled martini for us to enjoy. But again, for the listener's benefit, it's probably better we weren't too soused, <laughs> too deep into the martinis for us to record this episode here this week. So I hope everyone enjoyed that, got a lot out of it. And I hope also you get a chance to see Jania give her presentation on Women in Magic. I have personally not yet seen it, but I'm anxious to see it someday soon. And I know it's going to be great. Well, I think that's going to be a wrap here for this week, and uh, next week we're going to be coming up with episode number 666. I know that sounds rather ominous, and perhaps it might be. We will see how this turns out. So please come back and join us again next week. And if you'd like to know what's going to be happening from week to week and who's going to be coming up on each podcast, please be sure to subscribe to our pod letter. And you can do that by going to themagicwordpodcast.com, and there you'll see a place where you can subscribe quite easily. Anyhow, thank you very much again for joining us this week. And so until next week, stay well, get booked, and remember, be nice. This is Scotty out. Scotty out.